Hi, this is the last video that I can think of doing on the state of inner city train travel in the U.S. And this video is going to focus on major cities that do not have train service currently in 2023. And a lot of them are in what I call the American train deserts, just whole areas of the country that do not have passenger train service. So here's a, a national map of all the routes of Amtrak in the U.S. currently, 2023. And as I mentioned in previous videos, the red indicates where there are more than five trains per day in each direction. And then the orange is the middle level, two to five trains per day. And then there's blue and light blue. Regular blue is one train a day and light blue is three trains a week in each direction. So you can see here that there is coverage across the whole country, but there are big areas between these routes that do not have train service. And I call these the passenger rail deserts in the U.S. So one of the states that's in one of the deserts is Idaho, and it just has one station way up in the northern panhandle of the state. And the main city of Boise, which is getting a lot of great press. A lot of people are moving to Boise and I'm putting the population figures for the metropolitan areas of each of the cities that I'll show. So Boise has a population of three quarters of a million and growing, but the nearest Amtrak station is like five, six, seven hours away. This is the Boise Depot that still stands built in 1925 and the last trains, like a lot of places in the U.S., the last trains operated until the early 1970s. Next city is Phoenix. Now there is a station called Maricopa and Phoenix is in Maricopa County, but it's 30 miles south of Phoenix and the trains only arrive during the middle of the night going in both directions. So the city of Phoenix, which has a growing population, 5 million, does not have train service to the city. And this shows you where the existing train station is located. And there's a freight train passing through. This is looking north so that it's said that the train station anchors the south side of downtown Phoenix. And this is the station that still stands, built in 1923 in the Mission Revival style. And they had service up until 1996. And here's a better angle of this gated off station just waiting for passenger service to return to this major American city. Okay, the next area I wanted to focus on is Colorado. And Colorado does have two lines, one that cuts through the southeastern part of the state and another that goes through the north central part of the state, east west. And there are cities north and south of Denver that do not have train service. So this is one of the current trains near Trinidad, Colorado, in the southeastern part of the state. So going north, if there was a connection between this line and the other line in Denver, this is Pueblo, which is a beautiful Romanesque-style station from yesteryear. And then Colorado Springs, another high-growth city. This is their former train station, now converted to a restaurant. Similarly, Boulder does not have train service. And then if the line continued all the way up to southern Wyoming, right across the Colorado border, I've mentioned this in a previous video, that Cheyenne, Wyoming just has one beautiful station. It'd just be great if this line could be reinstated and go between Trinidad and Cheyenne, Wyoming. And then also in the west, it's amazing to me that there isn't train service between the Los Angeles area and Las Vegas. And there must be a reason because it's a natural. There's so many people from Southern California that go to Las Vegas and most of them drive. You can fly. Las Vegas is a very busy airport, but you would think there would be train service. There's been discussion about there being a high speed rail line built, but how about a rail line built or reestablished? And it could connect with the existing system at Barstow. So this is the really cool looking former station in Las Vegas. I don't know whether this is still standing, but I just thought it was such a neat Art Deco style station, the Union Pacific Station in Las Vegas. Okay, we're going to move to some other rail deserts. We'll go quickly to the Outback in Texas. And as I've indicated in an earlier video, there are many cities in Texas that do not have train service. So some of them are Lubbock, Amarillo, 
Corpus Christi, and way down at the southern end of the state, Brownsville. Okay, let's move up to the Midwest, which I've also covered in previous videos. And I talk about Illinois as being one of the best states for Amtrak service. You can see all the lines going through Illinois, the many cities that the train serves. And it's surprising that it doesn't go to some of the major cities downstate or outside of the Chicago area, including Rockford and Peoria. And then in my video about the states with the least amount of train service that need to improve the most, Iowa is one of those states. And so there are various places in Iowa that could be served in this area of northern Iowa. So here are some of the cities, Des Moines, Ames, Iowa, home of Iowa State University, Iowa City, which is the home of the University of Iowa. So there could be some more lines in Iowa rather than just the one line where the California Zephyr goes across the southern part of the state, one train a day in each direction. So this is a one of the former train stations in Des Moines. I don't know if it's still standing, the Rock Island station. And Cedar Rapids has a beautiful old station. I don't know if that's still standing. The one in Davenport, Iowa is, could be reused in the Quad Cities area. And then these are stations in Illinois of major cities where the train doesn't stop anymore. Decatur, Rockford, Peoria, and Rock Island, also in the Quad Cities. And moving on to Wisconsin, which I've also covered in a previous video. I'll just mention again two cities. Madison, which could be reached on a train route going up from Chicago to Rockford, up to Madison, and then connecting with the existing line that goes northwest into Minnesota and then all the way to Seattle, between Chicago and Seattle. So here's the station in Madison that still stands, big city that does not have train service. The closest station is 30 miles away. And Green Bay, it's the third biggest city in Wisconsin behind Milwaukee and Madison. And you know where people could take the train to go here is to go see the Green Bay Packers. And this is their really impressive looking former station, the Chicago and Northwestern Depot, built right at the end of the 1800s. And Green Bay is also home to the National Railroad Museum. So you would think a city that has such a museum would have actual train service to it. Going across state lines over to Minnesota, Duluth, Minnesota, has an impressive downtown area, 100,000 or so people. And this is their former station, the St. Louis County Depot, built in 1892, right in the heart of the Romanesque era. And it's the one station in the whole country that I think is built in that style called the Loire Valley Chateau after an area in France where this is a typical style of architecture. And it served trains up until 1969. And then the other major city in Minnesota that does not have train service is Rochester, which has a overall metropolitan population of 225,000 with an impressive downtown skyline, as well as being the home of the Mayo Clinic. And this is their former station, the Chicago and Northwestern Station. Hey, let's take a look at another passenger rail desert, what I call the Bermuda Triangle. And in another video, I talk about the importance of this area of the country as being critical to a national rail network that is much more vital. And there are three states in particular in this region, Ohio, Kentucky, and Tennessee, where the level of train service is very little. It's very sparse. So Kentucky is the middle state of the three, and there's just one line that goes along the Ohio River right on the border of Ohio and Kentucky at the northern part of the state. And then another line that just cuts through the extreme western part of the state and has one station right on the Tennessee border. And there are many cities that do not have train service, including Louisville, Elizabethtown, Bowling Green, Frankfurt, Lexington, Tennessee, similarly, just has this one line, the same line that comes down western Kentucky, goes through Tennessee, only has two stations in the entire state. And one of them is a flag stop, New Bern, and it's where trains only stop in the middle of the night, and then Memphis, way at the southwestern corner of the state. So again, there are other major cities, Nashville, Chattanooga, Knoxville, and others that do not have train service. So building on Memphis, there are all these other cities, including in southern Indiana, Evansville, and in northern Alabama, Huntsville, that could be connected. I have all kinds of ideas of the way they could be connected, but there's just so many possibilities. And I talk about a connection that could be critical is Knoxville to North Carolina, which has a good network going on. And there's only one 
city in North Carolina that really doesn't have train service. Well, two cities that I will point out a little bit later on, but one of them is Asheville in western North Carolina. And if that could be linked to Knoxville, then we're off to the races in terms of having more connectivity from the east to the Midwest. So Louisville has this beautiful station, Union Station. Bowling Green still has a station. Lexington, the capital of Kentucky and the home of the University of Kentucky, I don't know whether this station still stands, but it shows the potential. And then in Tennessee, Nashville, Union Station, beautiful station built in 1900, waiting for passenger service to return. Chattanooga, this is a historic depiction of the station, a photograph of an old postcard, but this building still stands. It's now operating as a hotel. So beautiful. What a Romanesque powerhouse. And then Knoxville, which my wife and I were at recently, has two impressive former stations in that Dutch Revival style, former Southern Railway Station and the Louisville-Nashville Railroad Station, which is now a high school. And then Ohio, another state with just a huge gap in the middle, a huge desert with no train service. And the chief culprit is Columbus, a growing area, but no train service. So everybody has to drive in Ohio if they want to go between places. They're not going to get in a plane in Cincinnati and fly to Cleveland. They're going to be driving by and large. So Dayton, no longer a service. Lima, Mansfield, the list goes on and on. And just as with Kentucky and Tennessee, there could be a network that connects various cities to each other and gives people that alternative to driving. And it would help two stations in particular that have service, but it's very light. And these stations are just holding on by a thread. And I'm referring to Pittsburgh and Cincinnati. Cincinnati just has a service that arrives in the middle of the night. And I mean the middle, like 3 a.m. And it's a train that it only stops in Cincinnati three days a week in each direction. Uh, the line that goes between Chicago and Washington, D.C. And then from Cincinnati, there could be connections to Kentucky and Tennessee below. So there's just all kinds of possibilities. But the states of Ohio, Kentucky, and Tennessee really need to pick it up. So here's a former station in Columbus, since demolished. Beautiful. Another very impressive Italian station in Dayton that was demolished slowly over time. Now completely gone. Built in 1900. And this was an impressive station near Dayton in eastern Indiana, Richmond, still standing. So it could be connected to a more extensive Midwestern network. And then here's that beautiful Union Terminal in Cincinnati, number one attractive station in the country. Beautiful on the outside and the inside, an Art Deco powerhouse. Here's another desert that you wouldn't expect. It's in two states where there is very good service, and I rank these states highly in terms of best service. It's Pennsylvania and New York, but you can see that huge gap from southern New York into northern Pennsylvania. And I'll mention again that the lines in red are the train lines, and the lines in green are bus connection lines. So Pennsylvania has the one line that operates east-west in a kind of circuitous manner going up and around and through the valleys and the mountains of western Pennsylvania to go from Harrisburg to Pittsburgh. And then the northeast corridor comes down through Philadelphia. And then there's another line that goes from Pittsburgh down to Washington, D.C. But these major cities in northern Pennsylvania do not have train service currently. Allentown, Scranton. They could be connected to other cities that also don't have train service, Bethlehem, Reading, Williamsport, and in southern New York, Binghamton. So here's one old station still standing in Scranton, former Central New Jersey Railroad Freight Station. In the central New Jersey, you see their stations mostly in New Jersey, but also elsewhere in Pennsylvania and New York. Just They really paid a high amount of attention to architecture. So the station was built in 1891, and it's been unused for 50 years, since 1972. And then this is the Lackawanna Station in Scranton, beautiful, which I feature in other videos. And then this is the former station in Allentown. This is a postcard from 1912. This was built in 1890, and unfortunately it was demolished in 1971. But Allentown had a really beautiful station. It's too bad it's gone. And this station is, looks like from the past, the Central New Jersey train depot in Allentown. Unfortunately, it's still there. And then Wilkes-Barre, another 
major metropolitan area in Pennsylvania, eastern Pennsylvania. This station was built in 1868, just after the Civil War, and service ran until 1963. And then Bethlehem's Union Station, this picture's from 1979, that was kind of boarded up and the windows were knocked out, but it's been repurposed. The building still stands in Bethlehem, which is near Allentown. And then Reading, namesake of the Reading Railroad. And this is the only picture I could get of a semblance of a station. This is more like a signal tower, but they have a tourist railroad that runs north-south, starts in Reading, goes north, the Reading Blue Mountain and Northern Railroad. So Reading is a major possibility for future train service. And then I mentioned Binghamton right at the southern end of New York, just across the Pennsylvania border, but it's where one of the large campuses of the State University of New York is located, SUNY Binghamton. And here's what the downtown looks like in Binghamton, a good-sized metropolitan area. And here's their beautiful former station that was on the Lackawanna system, built in 1901. I wanted to talk about the one state I left out of the whole East Coast, going from South Carolina up to Maine, when I talked about the best states of the East. I left out New Hampshire because it doesn't go to the major city of New Hampshire, Manchester. It doesn't go to the state capital anymore of Concord. And I put Lacone in here. It's right on, right near Lake Winnipesaukee, a major summer tourist destination. So here's the former station in Manchester. I know it was built in 1897 and that service lasted until the 1960s. Don't know if this building still stands. Couldn't find a current picture. And then Concord on the former Boston and Maine Railroad. Beautiful station. Unfortunately, it has been demolished. It was replaced by a shopping mall. Too bad, but Concord's a cute state capital. Small, but attractive and could be connected if service was extended from the Boston area up to Manchester and then on to Concord. And then Laconia, the last city I mentioned in New Hampshire. Here's a historical picture from when it was built in 1892. Fortunately, it still stands. There's a picture from 2010. And this just shows you the extensive rail network that came up from Boston, Boston and Maine service. So New Hampshire used to be much more extensively serviced by rail than it is currently. And I did want to give special mention to the University of New Hampshire that owns the station in Durham, way in the southeastern part of the state, and it does get service. This is on the downeaster line that goes from Boston up to Maine. So New Hampshire deserves credit for that. And then another state that I did not include in my best states of the east, Georgia, just because it has a couple of stations and the whole middle part of the state does not have train service, and it could. So here are some cities and connections that can be made. We're talking Athens and Macon, Columbus, Georgia, Augusta, and then connections between them with Macon being the key city in the middle. So here's a look at downtown Macon, Georgia. It's a good sized metropolitan area of almost a half a million. And this is their former station. It still stands, I believe. I just thought this was a cool historical rendering. And it was designed by Alfred Feldheimer, who designed so many beautiful stations, including Cincinnati and other ones that I've pointed out in earlier videos. Here's an old station in Columbus, Georgia. Beautiful. Here's Marietta, Georgia, population more than 100,000 people in the, the overall area. And their former station built in 1898. Montgomery, the state capital, 400,000 population, no train service. What a beautiful station they still have if train service could be restored to Montgomery, built in 1898. And I'm sure back in the day it had segregated waiting areas and that has to be recognized, but the architecture is just fantastic. So the station really should be put back into service. And here's just another shot of it with a extensive train shed behind the station. And the trolley used to go to the stations from 1915. Mobile, 670,000 population. Big area. The train used to go up until the early 2000s, and then they stopped after there was a lot of damage and things from Hurricane Katrina going from Florida across over to New Orleans. So Mobile was central on that route. Impressive downtown. Not in a very impressive former station. This one was built in the 50s, and it was demolished. I don't know what they were thinking of architecturally in the 1950s after such great earlier decades of architecture before this. But this was a station in Mobile 
built in 1907, the Gulf Mobile in Ohio station. Beautiful, Mission Revival style. It's been damaged by hurricanes and restored. Huntsville, Alabama, Northern Alabama, a city on the move, 500,000 population already and growing. It's one of the bright spots of Alabama. And you can see a crane building yet another building in downtown Huntsville, which just gets rave reviews on various YouTube channels that I've watched. And Huntsville has one of the oldest stations still standing. The tracks still go by it. Huntsville, Alabama Depot, built in 1860, right on the eve of the Civil War. And service went here until 1968. Then in Northern Florida, Tallahassee, 400,000 population, home of Florida State University. They have an even older station, 1858, and it still served Amtrak until the early 2000s, like I mentioned, could be restored. Same thing with Pensacola, another large metropolitan area of more than 500,000 people. And they still have an old station. It's been since built into a hotel, which you see behind it. But Pensacola has a rail history and it's a large population that's not served by train service. Moving further west, a bit to Baton Rouge, which has a population. I'm surprised that it's almost a million, 875,000 in the overall metropolitan area. This is looking across the Mississippi to Baton Rouge, and you can see the state capitol building is on the left, and downtown is over to the right. And I remember driving by the station thinking, wow, what a beautiful station. The former Yazoo and Mississippi Valley Railroad Station. So there is service that comes up from New Orleans, but it goes east of here and up through Mississippi. So beautiful station right along the Mississippi. And it's a large metropolitan area, home of LSU, as well as the state capital. So and then further north along the Mississippi, Natchez, Mississippi. The train still goes through Natchez, and this is their former depot now converted to a restaurant. And then here's another Yazoo and Mississippi Valley Station in Vicksburg, which is a stately looking structure. And when we stayed in Vicksburg, we stayed in a bed and breakfast down near the river. And I can tell you that the freight trains still run up along the Mississippi and go by this station. So passenger service could be restored along this line. Vicksburg's a good sized area. And I can tell you when we stayed in that bed and breakfast and we heard the train horns at night, it sounded like the train was gonna be coming right through the bed and breakfast, but we were like a block up the street. So that's Vicksburg. And as I mentioned previously, Asheville, North Carolina, 500,000 and growing in the metropolitan area. And they used to have train service to Asheville. And as I mentioned before, it would be a key link to Tennessee to the west, going across the Blue Ridge Mountains. Not an easy thing to do, but doable. And when we were in Asheville, one thing we did see going on was the expansion of their highways, doing a major widening project. So that was a little disheartening to see that this area that's got traffic congestion is just going to perpetuate that more, and this area is going to keep growing, but they need another alternative to driving. And this is their former station, very impressive Southern Railroad Depot, built in 1905. It's since been demolished, but very unique looking station it was. And then also in North Carolina, another city you hear about, it's along the Atlantic, Wilmington, with a very impressive downtown and city. And this is their former station. This was demolished in 1970, unfortunately. But Wilmington's a major area that I talk about in another video about North Carolina. North Carolina does so many things right. Just have a couple more cities, I think, to connect to their network, and they'll be doing fantastic. And then the last city I'll feature on this list is Tulsa, which has more than a million population. I didn't realize it was that big. 47th biggest in the U.S. metropolitan area. The train does go to Oklahoma City, but it doesn't go to Tulsa. And this is a good last slide to show at the end of this video. It's just a beautiful shot of the Tulsa Union Depot at sunset. Beautiful Art Deco station built by the WPA, 1931, and still standing. So Tulsa, the last city on this list, one of our major American cities that does not have train service. So thank you for watching this. And if you watch some of the other videos, thank you for watching those too on inner city train service. And moving on to other topics now going forward. But thanks for watching.